You're watching Timeline. I'm Tyler Pollard, and I'm here talking with John Davis of Super Drag, playing the Paradise this evening. Very excited. Thanks for joining us. My pleasure. John, uh, the thing is, we talk about uh, your timeline, your earliest musical memories. So, um, talk about maybe one of the earliest things you remember about music coming into your life. Well, I know it was a part of my life further back than I can remember. Okay. Um, I come from a musical family. Like my, my parents both played instruments and sang and did. I mean, they weren't necessarily songwriters, or I mean, they you know, I think they perform. Um, it was more in terms of just when people would come over, they'd get together at the house or different things. I mean, they weren't out playing gigs for money, right. you know. Um, but even now, actually, in, until recently, my, my dad's a banjo picker, mm -hmm. so he he's played in a, in a bunch of different bluegrass bands um, over the years. So they had tons of records in the house. I mean, from the from the time I was very small, I can remember. Uh, I used to pretty much refuse to go to bed unless they play the records. That was, I mean, and, and again, that was that, arrangement. that's just hearsay. Like, I don't actually remember that. Yeah. But I know it happened. Um, but yeah, they had tons of records in the house. They had a lot of, uh, obviously, a lot of bluegrass records, like Flatten Scruggs and all of that, because my dad was sort of into that. Like, it's kind of a long story, but he, um, he worked in a pizza parlor, and they had one of the old school dough rollers mm -hmm. and he ran his hand through it um awful <laughs> so one of the things that they recommended i mean it crushed it you know and so one of the things they recommended for rehab was banjo because you have independent, it's everything yeah it's independent uh motion of all the digits and this and that so he took it up and this was actually like i want to say probably 1970 or 71 when the whole kind of folk revival was going on mm -hmm. in this sort of like a sub sort of subculture of like the rock and roll thing of the time or whatever and he just really enjoyed it and yeah. just stuck with it so that was a big part of it also they had a lot of um, Motown Atlantic Soul kind of Stax Volt mm -hmm. that was kind of their that my mom was mostly into that mm -hmm. um, and they had some Beatles records and stuff but they were mostly like I think by the time Rubber Soul came out, they were probably over it. You yeah. know what I mean? Like they were into the early kind of Beatlemania era and they had the singles and stuff, but that was it. Um, and I, I could go on and on. I mean, there, were, there was tons of music in our house. Mm -hmm. um, and from a really early age, they encouraged me, which is kind of a polite way of saying they forced me to take piano lessons, which <laughs> I hated. Yeah. Um, I hated to practice. I hated going to the lessons because the teacher scared me. I was, I was, How young are we talking? I like was five. Five. Yeah. And she had, um, it would probably be a really cool place to visit now, mm -hmm. but her house was really like old and kind of dark and full of antiques. <laughs> Just bad things happened in there. And she used to give the lessons. She had, it was like a finished basement kind of thing. And for a five-year-old kid, it was kind of spooky, you know? Yeah. So I used to hate going in there and I hated practicing. But I really enjoyed playing. Mm -hmm. And I actually took lessons for five years. And that's really the only musical training I've ever had. Mm -hmm. And it kind of tuned my ear into being able to hear notes, just sort of think about a note and be able to hear it. Mm -hmm. So I was able to pick up a bunch of other instruments by ear. And uh, I don't know, I, the first guitar I had, I got when I was 10. And, that was, it was it. That was it. It was mm -hmm. a done deal. Yeah. Basically. Was it, and that was, was uh, were you kind of listening more to guitar players as a kid? Was that, or is it just guitar love? Yeah, I, well, I, I had this mistaken impression that like you couldn't rock and play piano. Mm -hmm. You sure. know what I mean? Like I didn't really know about Jerry Lee Lewis or Little Richard or mm -hmm. the architects of rock and roll who play piano, Fats Domino or any, any of those guys. So. 
I thought I had to have a guitar. And I was kind of obsessed with guitars for a long time before I was actually able to get one. Mm -hmm. um, and then I finally got one when I was 10 and, you know, I would, I would come home from school every day and play guitar for three or four hours every single day. It was mm -hmm. all, I really didn't care about doing anything else. And you didn't go to lessons with guitar? No. No, just, uh, no, I just sat down and did it. I just played very badly for mm -hmm. a while. Were there uh, records you played along to that you remember kind of winning all the yeah, time? Yeah, um, Zeppelin IV. Yeah. That was, that, that was kind of... Covers a lot of ground. That was the target. That was my that was my goal was to be able to play like that. How close did you come? <laughs> well, um, real talk, yeah. not very close. Yeah. <laughs> like I figured out, I, but I did figure out the first song I figured out how to play was that song Black Dog. Mm -hmm. Except I was playing it like two octaves higher than it really was on the record. But then eventually I figured out no no it's like the the lower strings. You know you'd have these revelations. Yeah, but like, in in the same way, like uh, there were other songs that I tried to figure out much later that were that were in alternate tunings, and I was trying to figure them out in standard tunings. Mm -hmm. And then one day it dawned on me they're not in standard uh, tunings. Oh yeah, <laughs> it's not fair. You know, <laughs> it's not fair. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, so really, from the time I was in sixth grade, pretty much. That was when I started playing. Did and you go I, see any uh, concerts along that path? Um, not really. No. I mean, the the uh, I went to some all ages shows. Like local bands would play. Like when I was in like eighth or ninth grade, the first the first like national touring band that I ever saw play in a club was Fugazi. That was much later. I mean, I, I was in like tenth grade. Right. But, you know. So there was a lot happened in between. Um, in the meantime, but uh, what did that experience do for you? That was mind blowing. Yeah, it was one of the best things I've ever seen. I mean, th those guys played in Knoxville all the time. They would come through like every year. Yeah, like, there for a while, and uh, yeah, I mean, those are still some of the best live performances I've ever seen. Mm. But I, yeah, I you know, I so I I was this sixth grader like sort of trying to learn classic rock songs like. You know, I was listening to like Led Zeppelin and Black Sabbath and just rad on the radio, mm -hmm. you know, FM, like classic rock radio. I heard all the SST bands mm -hmm. and that changed everything. Sure. You know, I had to actually, in, in terms of like musical stuff that really probably changed the course of what I wound up doing, I had a cousin who was into all those bands. I mean, in 1985, I would go to his house and he had New Day Rising, Double Nickels on the Dime, mm. uh, all the Clash records, all the Replacements records. It was like the best case scenario for like a kid that wanted to get into music. Yeah. And he actually didn't mind me hanging around and bugging him and listening to his <laughs> records, you know? Yeah. And um, so that happened pretty early on in the deal and then later um, I, I was really into skateboarding too like that was the other thing that I really liked a lot and I saw Streets on Fire the Santa Cruz video mm -hmm. which all those bands you know provided the soundtrack yeah and so you know the first time I heard Firehose was the Nottis part mm -hmm. for example or like Paranoid Chant by the Minutemen you know that was the Jason Jesse part at Fallbrook Ramp and <laughs> so all these things just Basically, yeah, I, I realized, okay, that's that's what I like. I can put it all together. Yeah, yeah. You know, well, and really, um, they weren't really a part of that film or anything, but Dinosaur Jr., mm -hmm. I mean, that basically leveled everything for me. I mean, when, when I heard uh, You're Living All Over Me for the first time, it was like my favorite record of all time. It's a good one. Just, you know, it, I mean, to this day, like, somebody asked me the other day, like, they asked me a question in, in an interview. They were like, if you were stuck on a desert island w and you could take one super drag record and one other record, what would you choose? And I was like, well, I'd let somebody else take the super drag record <laughs> to their island and I would take your living all over me and maybe, you know, a love supreme. Well, that really puts it on the line, you know. Yeah, <laughs> you know. And uh, you also went to drums for a little while? Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, Kind of by default, really, because mm -hmm. I I had some, I had some friends like 
Yeah. We, we played in little crappy bands in middle school, like cover bands, and this and that. And a friend of mine had a drum kit. And so I was able to kind of s just sit down and kind of figure out that I had an affinity for mm -hmm. it, you know? Um, nothing spectacular, but just being able to keep a beat, basically. Mm -hmm. And so, then later on, I had a friend that I, that I played in a bunch of bands with that lived in my neighborhood. It was like my best friend. We'd hang out every day, and we probably formed a dozen different little bogus bands where we would if, he would play drums in one, and then I would play drums in another kind of thing. But so I ended up playing drums a lot, you know, for a long time. And then when I actually when I met Brandon and Tom, uh, two of the other guys in Supergrad, mm -hmm. they had a punk rock band called The Used that was kind of, and you know, it's always awkward to say you were in a band called The Used because it wasn't that used. <laughs> right. This is Knoxville, not in Utah. <laughs> um, but, yeah, just a coincidence. But they, uh, they had some gigs booked and they needed a drummer and Brandon went out with my cousin. Like, that was how we met. Mm -hmm. And, he played me like some four track stuff that they had and I really liked it. And they ha had some gigs booked and their drummer quit. So they needed a drummer and they asked me to sit in. So I did, I bought a drum kit for 200 bucks and I started playing drums in their band. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was pretty much what started all this. Mm -hmm. So that probably helped a lot playing drums to like kind of reinforce it in the songs you were writing. Was that a big change? once you started playing drums, how you were writing? Well, the, then, really about that same time, I, I really started, you know, doing four track demos where I'd play everything. Mm -hmm. And being able to complete an idea like that, that was huge. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think that really like stoked the fire of just trying to come up with more and more songs. Mm -hmm. um, but really, man, I didn't really learn how to play drums, I don't think, until I played in a band with Don for 10 years. Yeah. Cause, Fantastic drummer. Dude. The best. <laughs> I mean, there's a big difference between playing him and hitting him with sticks. Right. <laughs> he, you know, he, he, he definitely helped to underline that for me. So uh, maybe we can talk about some of the, um, the early memories you have about when you started writing and uh, some of the pop influence you started to bring into your own songs. Yeah. Um, I think, in terms of songwriting, I think probably my first efforts, I would have probably been about 14 or 15 years old. And they were definitely half-assed at best. Like, I would sh shrink in horror if you played any of them right now. Uh, I mean, it, it probably took me a good couple of years to write anything um, that I wouldn't be embarrassed by. Uh, in matter of fact, there's one uh, there's one super drag song it was on our second album, a song called Pine Away. That was one of the first like good songs that I had, and it ended up, you know, it was several years. I guess maybe five six years later, it ended up on a record, or maybe even later than that. But uh, yeah, that was one that was kind of in the tank that just occurred to me again, and I wanted to do something about it. I. Uh I got a kind of a, a philosophical question for you, um, and a, you know, a double-edged compliment as well. I, I, um, one of the things I liked about I like about Super Drag is the uh, I, I kind of feel like I learned uh, the beauty and simplicity and uh, the importance of a lean melody. Um, is there a band along the way that you've kind of taken a value from in what you do today? Oh, definitely, definitely. Man. Yeah. So many heroes, you know. Uh, Honestly, if I had to choose, if I had to look at the whole the, like big picture, everything that we've done from the get-go up till now, I think probably the single biggest influence is Husker Du. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, that band means more to me than that. There, there's no band in history that means more to me than those three dudes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it would be a lateral move if it was, you know. And uh, I would say there's actually one song on the new album that kind of makes me feel like uh, oh, yeah. Husker well, Du. Yeah, I mean, it's... Which is awesome. And uh, I think there's a lot more influences showing up on this album, um, which is cool, because uh, the same super drag, you know, simplicity is there, but there's a lot more 
nodding going on, uh, I think, than usual. Well, I think this new album is probably the, the album I would like to have made when I was 18 or 19 years old. I just didn't know how. Mm -hmm. you know. Uh, and again, I mean, it, we, you know, we, we, we kind of come from a punk background. And that was kind of how we started uh, playing together. That was kind of our, our style of music. But it, was, it never really came to the fore like it did on this record. Mm -hmm. For whatever reason, I think the whole deal just kind of had an urgency to it um, for one reason or another. But also, I think it's a really bogus concept that you have to start playing slow and mellow and soft just because you get older. Yeah, no. I don't, I don't buy it. I hope you don't. Not into it. <laughs> so... All right. Well, uh, I uh, guess we'll uh, thank you for your time. Oh, um, I, I learned an awful lot about uh, what got you here and uh, <laughs> the things that you carry with you. And uh, Super Drag's out on tour for uh, the foreseeable future. They did a tour in Europe and uh, out promoting their new album, Industry Giants. Make sure to go pick it up. Uh, thanks a lot, John. Thank you. Got it. Appreciate it, man.